um, it's a uh, quantity color specific gravity reaction and the smell of the urine now today we will be going into what is the chemical composition of the urine and going to the chemical composition urine urine is mainly formed of three <coughs> water almost 98% 96% of the urine is water itself here you can see that and in addition to water you, there is a small amount or small percentage of solid substances are also there and these solid substances mainly include urea as well as sodium chloride that is what is uh, shown on the first slide here you can see that urine is mainly composed of water that is 96% it is water plus around 4% it is solid substance and mainly the solid substances are urea and sodium chloride now in an adult if an adult taking 100 g of protein in 24 hours the composition of urine is likely to be as follows so what is mentioned below is a is the is the no, composition of a person a normal adult person and in a 24 hour period he, he must be taking only 100 g of protein then the uh, composition of the urine will be like this on the other hand if he is not taking uh, only 50 g of pro, uh, protein in 24 hours last 24 hours then there may be slight variation and if he is taking 200 g of protein again there will be slight variation so this is based on a person normal adult person and in the last 24 hours he has taken only 100 g of protein that is the that is how the assessment is made so you can see that the uh, in a normal person it is the amount of water is only 96 percentage 96 percentage is the amount of water then you can see then coming to the solid solid substances are constituting around 4 percent of the substances are only solid then you can see the out of that 4 percent 2 percent are actually uh, urea so, yeah, out of the 4 percent here about 50 percent or you can say 2 percent of the total solids are only urea are actually urea plus another 2 sub percent called metabolic products these are the different metabolic products so what are the different types of metabolic what is a metabolic product metabolic product basically means the waste materials and other substances that are produced by our body when our body is doing some kind of activity these activities are the total activities of our body is to the non regenerate metabolism. We might have heard about anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism means the constructive activities, catabolism means destructive activities. So in our body different types of activities are going on and together these activities are non regenerate metabolism. So whatever activities are going on in our body, they will be producing some kind of material and this include uric acid, creatine, electrolyte, salt like sodium chloride, potassium chloride and bicarbonate. So these are the different types of solid materials that we can see in, a, in, the, in the body of an adult person, in the urine of an adult person. So the next one is regarding its um, what is called uh, uh, the first substance is known as the urea. <coughs> urea is basically an end product of protein metabolism. <laughs> because when we are taking urea, uh, protein in our body, protein will be containing a lot of nitrogen in that. And that nitrogen will be converted into ammonia. Ammonia combines with the carbon dioxide forming this is how urine is formed in our body. So urea is actually an end product of nitrogen intake or protein intake. Then it is prepared from the aminated amino acid in the liver. That is how the process of urea, urea formation is taking place. In the liver, the one amino acid will be removed from the urea and the reason will improve blood circulation. So the normal quantity of urine, how much amount of urine is normally present in a person. If you take a 100, uh, 100 ml of urine, 
uh, normal 100 ml of blood that will the, the person will be having uh, an amount of urine for the person will be having around 20 to 40 milligram per 100 ml dl means deciliter that is the amount of uh, urea present in the blood now second is the uric acid uric acid is also present in the urine normal uric acid in the blood is 2 to 6 milligram per 100 ml or deciliter and about 1.5 to 2 gram is excreted daily in the urine. So second substance that is prominent in the urine is the uric acid. So one the most common or most abundant substance is urea followed by urea there is uric acid. Then there is another, uh, another substance known by the name creatine. Creatine is actually present in muscle. In muscle there is a substance known by the name creatine or creatine phosphate. From that creatine, creatine is actually formed. Now, uh, along with that, there will be some other substance like urine bodies, oxalates, phosphate, sulfates, and urates are the other minor metabolic products that, which, that we can find in the urine. Then, what we are seeing is finally the salt, different type of salt or electrolytes. Basically, the sodium chloride or potassium chloride. So, lot of sodium chloride along with the sodium chloride, potassium chloride are all. These are basically salt. And uh, they mainly are, are, you, are, are, you, are, are treated in the urine to maintain normal level in the blood. Because when there is too much salt, too much sodium or potassium in our body or in our blood, they will be slowly eliminated or excreted in the form of urine. And that will be reducing the amount of salt in our blood. These are the salts which are the part of our daily diet and are always taken in, in excess and need to be excreted in the urine. That is, if you are consuming too much salt, normally an adult person can around, take around 8 grams of salt without much problem. But if he is having some kind of problem like blood pressure, then he can take only 2, no, two grams of salt per day, safely. But an adult healthy person can take 8 gram of salt without much complication to his health. So that is the amount of salt. But if you are taking more than 8 gram of salt, for example, you are taking 15 gram of salt, you are consuming lot of fried uh, no, no, chips and other kinds of things. Then it all also contains lot of salt. That excess salt will be normally eliminated or excreted through the urine in the form of sodium oil or potassium oil. So coming to the chemical composition, these are the um, important features. Now, another part of the urine, uh, chemical composition is regarding abnormal constituents. So what I was mentioning here is regarding the normal chemical composition. So this is the normal chemical composition. Now sometimes when a person is having some kind of disease or disorder, for example he has a kidney disease, then his kidney may not be working properly or he has some other kind of diseases. So in a, when a person is having some kind of disease, there is a difference in the uh, elimination of protein, glucose and carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, carbohydrates in his urine. And this is known by the abnormal constituents of urine. Abnormal constituents of urine means they are not normally present when the person is in a healthy state. Only the person is having some kind of disease or disorder, then only these substances are actually produced. So in a normal condition, we are excreting 20 to 80 milligram of protein in a day. That is a normal amount of protein eliminated in the form of urine. So what happens is that, but when albumin and globulin are found in, in illness condition, then these are two substances called albumin is a protein, globulin is also a protein. When these proteins are present in the urine, we call that situation normally proteinuria. Proteinuria simply means presence of protein in the urine. The presence of protein in the urine is known by the name proteinuria. Now based on the type of protein, if albumin is present, we call it as albuminuria. 
is globulin is present, we call it as globulin, globulin urea. That's you are urea. Then, when a person is suffering from nephritis, nephrosis, and leukoma, nephritis and nephro, um, uh, nephrosis are actually diseases affecting you know, nephro. Nephrino renal tubule. In the kidney, we have this thousands of small nephrons are the when some kind of damages are taken place to the, to the nephron, then there is the re inflammation of nephron. This, both are, this is actually a bacterial infection. This is a kind of a cancer. So all of these, uh, this situation lead to a case known by the excess amount of protein in your urine. That situation is known by the protein urine. Then there is another substance known by the glucose. So if you glucose, about the glucose, all of you may be known. Diabetes mellitus is a very common disease. Simply means too much glucose in blood or too much glucose in urine. So what happens here is that when amount of glucose is increased in urine, the urine is capable of reducing Benedict's reagent or Felix's Felix reagent. So Felix's Felix reagent. Uh, and the condition is called glucose urea. So glucose urea technically means presence of glucose in the urine. How we are dictating presence of glucose? We are taking a small amount of urine and mixing it with either the red solution or with the red solution, then we are getting a red color. Then that red color, you may have done that in your first two classes. So that red color indicates presence of glucose. So same test we are also doing here. And that situation is from where Glucose urea. Now coming to glucose urea, the glucose urea can be divided into two, uh, two separate types. One is temporary glucose urea, and second is the diabetic glucose urea or more permanent glucose urea. Now, for example, you are taking too much glucose. When a person is taking too much amount of glucose, there will be slight increase in the amount of glucose in the in, in, in his or her blood. And that extra glucose will be eliminated in the urine. This situation is known by the name temporary glucose urea. So glucose urea may be either temporary or more or less permanent. If it's temporary due to a high intake of glucose or high intake of sugar, we call it by the name temporary glucose urea. And similarly, mental excitement or illness. In that situation also, when the person is very happy, or, or sometimes, in, especially in old days, with uh, older people, some kind of mental excitement can increase the glucose. So that is another situation where glucose can be increased. Then illness, some kind of illness can also lead to, if any kind, some kind of disease can also increase your glucose. So this, uh, any temporary increase of your glucose in your blood, or in your on your or, or in your urine is known by the name temporary glucose urea. So a slight a temporary increase of glucose in your urine is known by the glucose urea. The second one is a diabetic glucose urea. Diabetes is a situation where you have studied about diabetes. What is happening in case of diabetes? There is a hormone. What is the hormone responsible for controlling your blood sugar? Insulin, which organ is producing insulin, which is the gland producing insulin. There is a gland responsible for producing insulin. What is that gland? It is pancreas. The cell. So pancreas will be having a type of cells known by the beta cells. So it is this beta cells of the pancreas that it is producing insulin. And what is the function of insulin? Insulin will be converting the glucose into so that is a normal function of insulin. So in insulin will be helping in the conversion of glucose into glycogen. So when our body doesn't have enough amount of insulin, what this conversion of glucose into glycogen may not be taking place. And in that situation, the glucose will be remaining in the blood as a And that will be elevating or increasing the amount of glucose in your blood. And that situation is what we call higher blood uh, higher blood sugar level or simply in the context diabetes mellitus. So when there is too much blood in uh, too much 
is sugar in your blood or too much of glucose in your blood, that extra glucose will be going to the urine. That will be going to the kidney from the kidney into the brain. is happening that is leading to glucose urea. So if you are having a disease combined and diabetes mellitus, certainly your body or urine will be having a more, no, more than normal amount of glucose. And that situation is known by the name uh, diabetic glucose urea. So diabetic glucose urea means it's a disease disease situation in which a person is having diabetes and his blood will be higher, higher the higher, more than normal level of glucose. Extra glucose will be eliminated from the body in the form of urine. And that situation is known by the name diabetes glucose urine. So here we have taken one substance is the protein, second substance is the glucose. Now coming to the third substance, uh, this is a, a glucose is also a carbohydrate. It's one kind of carbohydrate. Other than glucose, we can have fructose will be present, lactose will be present, and galactose will be present. So these are all sugar, you, have, you might have studied, these are all monosaccharide sugar, simple sugar. If fructose is present in urine, it is fructose urea. If galactose is present in urine, it is known as a galactose urea. If lactose is present, it is known as a lactose urea. So that is how uh, different terms are used. Basically, this is all the name of the sugar plus urea means fructose plus urea, fructose urea. Now, we go to the uh, some more uh, abnormal substance like a fat, ketone, proteins and blood. Normally, in a, uh, in a normal healthy condition, human urine does not contain any fat. So, normally fat is not a part of urine. But, India is a heavy diabetes. There is one situation. Another situation, if you are drinking too much alcohol, then you are taking a rich, uh, more amount of rich fish liver oil or other kinds of fat daily, then there will be an increase in the uh, presence of fat in your urine. That situation, when, when there is a condition in which a liquid or fat is detected in urine, is called by the lipuria. Lipid in urine is known as lipuria. So lipuria is a not a normal situation. If you are having either diabetes or you are taking too much amount of fish liver oil or you are drinking alcohol. And they, these are the three situations that leads to lipuria. Then what happens the next is the, the ketone bodies. Ketone bodies are of three types. They are acetoacetic acid, Hydroxy, butyric acid, and acetone. These are the three different types of ketone bodies: hydroxy acetic acid, acetone, and and uh, uh, acetoacetic acid. Now, normally ketone bodies are not present in your body. Actually, uh, the ketone bodies are produced in your body when your body is um, undergoing fat digestion or fat metabolism. When fat is metabolized, that is, when energy is produced from fat, normally our carbohydrate or glucose is used for producing energy. But there are situations in which body doesn't have enough supply of carbohydrate. For example, you are starvation, you are not getting enough food. That is one, one major situation, the person is not getting enough food. Then, that situation is known as starvation, or abnormal metabolism of carbohydrate in certain people due to some genetic problem. Or people who take high amount of fat, uh, fat diet. So only in this is one, either starvation, abnormal metabolism of carbohydrate, or high intake of fat. Only in these three situations, ketone bodies are present. Ketone bodies are actually formed during fat metabolism. And there are three types of ketone bodies, acetoacetic acid, hydroxy, butyric acid, and acetone. And when these ketone bodies are present in your blood, that will be also uh, reaching your urine. And when, it, when ketone bodies are reach, uh, present in urine, 
we call it by the name ketonuria. So it can be sometimes a uh, question question paper, if you can get a one mark question. What do you mean by ketonuria? It's simply presence of ketone bodies. And there are three types of ketone bodies we have to explain. And what are the situations that leads to the presence of these ketone bodies in your blood? So this is called as the ketonuria. So finally, the another substance that is uh, abnormally uh, present is known as the blood. Blood is not normally present in a healthy person. Only if you are ill, only if you have some kidney disorder, then you can find uh, blood in your uh, urine. And the presence of blood in urine is known as hematuria. Heme means blood. So blood in urea, urine is known as hematuria. So hematuria is another situation and during the acute nephritis means inflammation of nephron, urinary infection, urinary like uh, either any kind of bacterial infection of urethra, urinary bladder, ureter or kidney. These are known as urinary infection, some kind of physical trauma or injury, somebody is attacking your abdomen, kicking on your abdomen or kidney, then there will be injury. The blood will be appearing in the urine. So, appearance of blood or presence of blood in urine is known by the name So, we have three, six different type of substances are there. And along with, and these are the six main substances. Again, we have few more substances known as bilirubin. Bilirubin is a biotreatment and it is, uh, it is also not normally present when you have a down disc. Then bilirubin is present in excess amount and that will be giving your urine yellow color. Manja Then second is the acetone. Acetone is also not normally present. If acetone is present, it will be having the smell of an acetone. You know the smell of an aqueous remover. That is acetone. When urine have you are having that smell, it is known as acetonuria. Then there are some kind of bacterial disease which are known as gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is a bacterial disease. Now it is not a common disease in the, during the time of Second World War and First World War. Gonorrhea used to be a common problem, and and that time there will be a presence of pus. Pus will be appearing in urine, and that is that is also an abnormal situation. Finally, we have urinary calculi. Urinary calculi means cal calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate, calcium oxalate. When the crystals of this kind of salt are appearing in the urine, that situation is known as urinary calculi. You have heard about kidney salt. Kidney salt. Small rock like rocks will be present. Very small. Sometimes some rocks are also very big. Then the presence of so rocks form calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate, or most commonly calcium oxalate uh, are known as urinary calculi. And that will be a problem due to the infection of kidney, urethra or urinary bladder. And that what, what happens is that when these minute rock particles are present in your kidney, the flow of passage of urine may not be taken very smoothly. A person will be having a lot of pain during the time of urination and the urine may not be allowed to, when may not be able to pass through freely. Then urine will be accumulating in the urinary bladder that will lead to kidney infection, urinary blood infection. So one, one after another other sort of complication will be coming. So that is a, simply a physical blocking of urine due to the presence of kidney stuff. So these are the uh, another another different type of abnormal constituents. So, so here you can see that there are about three main constituents. Then there are another three substances are the then another four smaller substances are also present. So these are the different type of uh, materials that you can have in your uh, kidney. So today we will stop here.